huge part of this off of MSS here. He did double stack this up for him. So nice little boon of early game experience. The Sentry Ward placed by Dialcom here though was actually pinged out by Rose immediately. I'm surprised it never did get dewarded. Oh, good point. Yeah, that's pretty obvious, of course, you know, being the block and everything, but yeah, not taking care of it, at least for the time being. Top lane, though, Rose going in. He does have backup. Axe as well as Shadow Demon nearby. Z-Talk, he's going to get caught by the splitters. Not the easiest stun to land without any setup, but he lands it right there. Disruption comes out. We're going to see a Berserker's call, and that should be the first blood, baby. There we go. SPG actually taking credit for it on the Rubik. So good rotation, safe to say. The Great weight point. there from SVG to not disrupt right away. Rubik Lift is a really fast cast point, and if Axe doesn't hit that call right away, he could have just gotten lifted out. But SVG held the disruption up until that lift basically got cast, and very easy first blood, so. Howie 2000, meanwhile, taking some pressure. Sand King realizing, okay, the supports are top. Let's go ahead and harass this Ursa a bit, knowing that they're not down here, of course. And actually, Rubik even comes down here, so how about this decision by Dalcom there? They want to go aggressive all of a sudden. Makes sense to you? I mean, it's something a lot of teams have started doing. If anybody watched any League of Legends or anything, it's it's a lane swap. It's a very common way to put pressure on the off lane. How dare you speak that word here? I know, right? <laughs> Terrible. So, I'm going to slam the ground, showing that he's pissed off. But obviously, Sand King will be able to burrow strike through and survive any chance of dying right there. SVG, meanwhile, going to snipe the illusion room. In front of SVG's Earthier. putting in work. Yeah, he's doing some good work right here. And Managing to box out the Earth Spirit. Disruptor, uh, like I said, he's, Disruptor's kind of an interesting hero because he feel, felt like he was dying off there. You know, this quote-unquote illusion meta maybe starting to fade out somewhat. But in this case, they, you know, they don't have a, they don't have a Luna, a Terror Blade, yet he's still picked up and still able to do work. And Sand King, Disruption, yeah, I mean, doesn't even need it, actually. Rose, to Diabolic Edict, easily finishes the job right there. Yeah, it seems like every time SD starts to fade, people start picking him again and maxing a different skill. Take some good damage right there from the tower. He doesn't have his face shift yet, so he's not able to prevent any of that tower damage. And actually could be in some more trouble. SVG putting down the ward. He's going for the kill, but at what cost right here? The Elusive Orb goes through. Not enough damage, though. He's put under by the Destructor, but he did actually port with the Elusive or Illusory Orb, excuse me, and manages to escape. I thought he was going to get caught right there for sure. I think he was looking for the kill on Envy. He hoped Envy was just going to back up, assuming you wouldn't port to that orb, and uh. then just sneak the last hit in real quick. Smart attempt. We're not done just yet. Barrel roll in. Rose now in the one in trouble. You can see Shadow Demon doing what he can, but that ain't much at that point. So, Lestrak will fall. Maybe get a turn kill onto Red J, but ain't going to happen either. And that'll be the end of that. So, the first kill, though, for Dialcom. Got to be. To go for that really early Helmet Dom and uh, just try to pressure the lane out a little bit. Okay, Xerox. Helm of the Dominator. This has been such a. Th this was one of the hotter topic items. Oh, bottom lane. How about that? Okay, well, Sankin goes down to her side. I don't know if you caught that, but... Yeah, I saw the very end of it. I mean, Orb of Venom in Phase Boots is all it really is. Okay. Not much more you can do against that. Oh, well, I'll get to that point in a second because we have more action right here. Z-Talk trying to make his escape. A couple TPs coming in. They need to be careful not to dive too much right here. The Berserker's Call going to whiff right there. Shadow Demon, he put his own team in under. I don't know if that was a misclick or what, but now Shadow Demon's in trouble. And SPG will fall. You see uh, Rose, meanwhile, keeping his distance and going to run it out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Shadow Demon meant to disrupt Rubik right there. And he accidentally hit Leshrac. Yeah, not, not really the best disruption we've seen yet today, but I'm sure he'll bring it back. Helm of the Envy, though, diving in. Oh, yeah. Leo style split earth. It's so hard to land without a setup again, but he lands it again, and the Dream Coil comes out. Not going to matter. Enough damage for the kill. So a big one at that yet again. That's a second death now on Puck. Right yeah, here. This is exactly what NP wants, though. They're rotating around really aggressively with the Shadow Demon and the Leshrac. It's so hard to bring down. And when you couple that with abilities like the Seder Purge is probably the most notable broken one that people have been picking up. Yeah. It's just so scary when you get ran at by a 1400 HP creep of Purge. <laughs> it's pretty pretty damn ridiculous. So bottom lane. Stun through on Ursa. Using that uh, going to barrel roll in actually. Trying to connect and they do catch Shadow Demon. And that will secure a kill. He's like, all right, fight me, bros. He will get caught and eventually gets picked off. Howie 2000, though, he's still being chased on. Dream Cold did catch him initially, but Leo Style, he wants Leshrac. I don't know, we realized he caught Ursa as well. Lucer Hero going to whiff right there, and Leshrac will be able to TP away. But now that stun come on Ursa, he pops his ultimate, though, with the Enrage. He is pissed off, but the kite is real. And Howie 2000 trying to make some kind of an escape. Ain't going to happen, though. No two piece coming in. Leo Style, he's a little bit careful to the tower, but he will survive, and the dive is successful for Team Dalcom there. Yeah, I mean, they traded a tower for two heroes off there. Good choice to commit.
For Spirit, you'd almost have to rush the Blink Dagger, but in this kind of a game, the Ember's gonna give you all the setup you need for the early game. So, he can go Vanguard, run his way into a few uh, more aggressive fights, more precarious positions, and come out okay. Yeah. Top lane, we may see some action. Earth Spirit, he's setting up TP coming in. Omni Slash is gonna go. He's gonna be put under, but now Shadow Demon realizing that this is a mistake. The silence coming from Earth Spirit, but the Berserker's call keeping Juggernaut in place despite the spin. Shadow Demon kiting. Soul Catcher is applied. He's trying to put some poison out too. Maybe get this kill on the fan. Ain't gonna be enough though. Omni Slash finally yields, and down he goes. MSS has his Coaling Blade, but cannot get close enough. And now Rubik's running in. Axel is another one in a lot of trouble. Fateful gonna be used. Earth Spirit. Okay, well, never mind. Axe is just fine. I I guess Vanguard makes him just too damn tanky to be able to yeah, kill right Yeah, that's exactly there. what he gets to do with the Vanguard. He was able to call the Juggernaut spin without any real concern for his life. And this is what happens when you have a Lesh level 5 this early. If this tower gets uh, any time for Lesh to sit on it, it's going to fall. DSJ's biggest favorite creep ever is that Cobalt Geomancer, the movement speed creep. Yeah. Like, he'll go clear small camps to look for that creep. <laughs> so... Oh, top left. We have initiation now. And Rage is popped by Earth. It's going to be fine for the time being. Leo's not coming in. Drink Call hits a couple. Lesh rack one of those. Diabolic Edict, though. It's not going to be off cooldown for a couple more seconds. Meanwhile, SPG in the background goes down. The epicenter goes off and down goes Lesh rack. And now Ember Spirit joins the party, though, as he comes in with his remnants. But I want cost for him. He's in trouble all of a sudden as the boulder smash goes through. Hits on Urza. Down goes Ember Spirit. And down goes Urza. MSS just got there simply a little too late. By the time he is full life, full mana, everyone on his team is dead. What a fight for Dialcom. Yeah, that was some weird miscommunication there. Like, the Ursa Blue isn't on his. Obviously, he did with the Tranquil and the Vanguard before that, as we Radiant's mentured. Middle tower is under attack. He's, he's extremely up. tanky, and he just needs to close up on that blink before they look for too many fights. But SVG, unfortunately, the sacrificial lamb of this team. <laughs> well, he got Poor the word down, I guess. So that, that's a word down. positive. Maybe counter, though, unfortunately. We'll see. Puck. Okay, Puck with the hand of Midas first. But, oh, and actually he's going for a kill to Rose, and he'll get it. Yes. He came down here with Dream Coil, and Leshrac just had to kind of run around with the chicken with his head cut off there. Seen from it, but they have to notice something's up. Yeah. They're, both of their lanes are pushing, and Dialcom's not reacting to it. Here we go. Van, he's charging in. Barrel rolling. Misses the combination. Got the signs off with the Shadow Demon Disruption. Puts him under. Meanwhile, the turn kill on a juggernaut. Earth Spirit's going to fall. The turn is real, baby. 14 MP. That's a 3 for nothing. Make it a 4 for nothing. And just as it was for Dialcom earlier, this time it's NP's turn. And they're going to absolutely wipe Dialcom. A double kill for Howie 2000. Four of them don't Dialcom's even have buyback. not expecting the blink on Axe. That was nope. his blink reveal, which is why they smoked up. He just picked that item up. And wow, did that pay off for them. Two kills to start that fight off before Dialcom could even react. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a five. For oh, Earth Spirit going to get caught by that split Earth. He did going to take him down a little bit, but that barrel roll, of course, will allow him to get away. Although Remnant, oh, you got to be careful, though. It's Eternal Envy into the shrine, and he's going to be turned. That's not what you want. That was so throwy. <laughs> you had vision up there. You saw four heroes. Yeah, they, he, well, he, he, he maybe, he was tunnel vision, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> he, he saw the one yeah. hero. He didn't see the others. SVG definitely going to be a casualty here, too, but they were making space for Owies. He does pick up the Roshan. Okay, yeah, there's that, but down goes SVG as mentioned, and that's two free kills, really, for Dialcon, that they'll gladly accept. So. Running at them. They've got all their core items, they have the base of what they want, and this is where you can just start applying pressure and, and make moves on Dialcon. The only thing you have to be aware of is you can't get, like, three-man burrowed, or you could die, but yeah. as long as they take fights safely, just put Owie in front with that Aegis, they should be free to sweep up most of these T2s. Yeah. Oh, bottom lane. Now, Ember Spirit not here. Just, okay, he is going to pour it in. Here we go. Fan. Oh, Fan just melts right there. Puck. Going to use the face shield. Full survive for a little bit long. There's a counter for a strike with the epicenter. Those are enough damage for the kills. Are going to survive? Barely goes down, but he has the end. It's the turn in favor of NP. Definitely working out for them. Down goes Sand King. And Puck, the sole survivor, some way, somehow got away. Actually gets the kill on the last track as well before he ultimately runs away right here. But, man, yeah, that's exactly what you're saying, Z-Rock. That Tessellator. Juggernaut died in what seemed like two or three hits, like half a second. Yeah, just the dial come. Oh my god, that was a thing of beauty. Why do why don't we see that more often? I feel like that's something we should see actually more. Just how fast he actually did get the kill, but in the background though, Puck is still low. He went for the kill, and it's gonna come at a cost for his life. Most likely, the Earthquake goes down. There's the slide of fist, uh, and actually secures the kill. But now, Eternal Envy. He's gonna try to make his way out. Disruption, putting him under. 
There's a remnant use, and he'll be fine. Shadow Demon, not so lucky, but hey, he's uh, once again the sacrificial landmark. Maybe not. Howie 2000 coming back in a rage pop. And this is turn, baby. MSS is here as well. The spin's coming out. They got the one, the dunk right there for the second on the van. And now Z Talk Rubik, he's wishing that they did not do this. He's like, oh, somebody save me. It ain't going to happen. No this team is just Double so kill. punishing when they're ahead. If, if they don't have to use defense, like disruption super defensively, if Axe can just say we're going and jump on someone, they just clear out Dialcom so fast. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's showing its strength here, and with the way the game's being played lately, where it's so objective-oriented, where you just kind of five-man up and, and run at people in the early game. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, hold on. No, never mind. We're done. <laughs> hold on. One quick sec. I mean, in this game, Zetok should probably never get to his Blink Dagger. I don't think SK is going to see more than one more item. It's insanely hard for Dialcom to come back from this position. Yeah. Or it really wasn't out of control from that. I mean, that wasn't really the, the reason here. I think that was entirely one of the main reasons they're losing these team fights. Some of these fights have been extremely close, and they just didn't quite have the damage to close out on them. And if they had the Veil, that could change entirely. Go to the bottom lane, maybe try to get a pick down here, and it could be very possible they're going to somewhat, not necessarily blindly, as MSS with the ambit is going to jump up, and that should be a dead juggernaut. Indeed, yep, he'll go down. He does not have a buyback, actually. He just bought his Diffusal Blade. A really unfortunate timing. If it does, then maybe there's a maybe there's a chance of that comeback crawl here. Maybe Puck will buy a Veil with the 4,700 gold he has saved that's, up. Who that's knows? possible. Oh, Ember. They are looking for Empty, though. Solo kill? Yeah, this should be a kill. Oh, he has maybe. a Remnant, too. He's out. <laughs> God, that's a powerful item on that hero to get away. And meanwhile, here comes this point out of like, hey, remember us, bitches? Down oh, goes indeed. Sanking. Well, maybe. Okay, Pearl Strike ain't going to be enough, though. He will go down. Face Shift not going to save Puck for the time being. Disruption putting him under. And he will manage to actually escape right there. Or somebody tried to make the escape, but the Veil put on him, and then back comes Ember Spirit to secure it. A two for nothing there for NP. It all started them trying to gank the Ember. It wasn't a bad idea from Dialcom. They needed to try to get something done, and they, they kind of took the Hail Mary to go for it. And losing this, they should lose their Tier 3, though, and... You can Yule's yourself when you're silenced. True. I'm not sure if, if he was actually baiting it out that close, or... If he, uh, if he just kind of forgot he had a use Mind for laps, yeah. <laughs> That's possible. The best of them happens to them. And now he's like, all right, Rubik, I pick you. You're dead. Three shot. Literally, Literally three shot. Yes, he did. That was a literal three shot indeed. Urza. Okay, the illusion's almost tearing him down. Now he has an Aegis, so I figured he might as well actually purposely die. Yeah. He says, all right, fine. Now I'm going to go back with full life and full mana. Now we see Rose trying to follow it up. Split us connects. Earth Spirit going to survive with the four staff away. But the Rack's falling in the meantime. This should all but do it here in favor of Team NP. For game number one, you did see the Dream Call used, but Eternal Levy in the background getting another pick before remedying out real quickly. Puck, yep, he's dead, and uh, let's see those GGs. Damn, well, I was hoping they would do just it. wants to enjoy their few more minutes in a real game. <laughs> a real game. Uh, middle lane, all right, so there we go. There, there it is. Dyer's so we'll clean up game one, and peace favor in 33 minutes. We do have a second game, as he's our best of twos. Yes, yes we do. So once again, guys, obviously we had those technical issues at the beginning, but uh, looks like we got them figured out, at least on our end. Hopefully the match we gets things started here very quickly because we did have a delayed start with this game. So we're going to take a short break.